There's been a sad, unsettling trend I've been noticing in media today. Whenever a famous celebrity or personality is revealed to be a scummy human being who has done detestable shit, literally everything they'd ever been even a remote part of gets scrubbed from the public record. A prime example of this phenomenon is Fox pulling a famous episode of The Simpsons, Stark Raving Dad, from circulation because the episode stars Michael Jackson. And if you've been following the news surrounding him recently thanks to a skating documentary called Leaving Neverland, Jackson is in some pretty hot water concerning allegations that he sexually abused children. Why is this a bad thing for Fox to do you might ask? It's really simple. Whether you personally believe the allegations against Michael Jackson or not, I think it is fucking bullshit for Fox to remove Stark Raving Dad one of the most critically acclaimed episodes of The Simpsons, mind you, and prevent people from ever watching the episode in the future. They are effectively censoring art and spitting in the face of all the people who spend months of hard work to produce an episode of The Simpsons. Not to mention it's a big fuck you to the fans of the show who love that episode regardless of the type of person Michael Jackson is. Michael Jackson wasn't even that involved with the episode itself, you guys. For contractual reasons, he had to be credited as John J. Smith, and the producers got a Michael Jackson impersonator to sing in his place. Even if Jackson did get properly credited in the episode and did all the singing and voice acting for his character by himself, I still don't think Fox should remove the episode from syndication. That is wrong. Alright, Alex. You've made your point. Fox and The Simpsons fucked up on this one. But what does this have to do with Red Letter Media, The Game Grumps, and Peanut Butter Gamer? Well, I'll tell you! On December 3rd, 2015, Red Letter Media uploaded an episode of their beloved Best of the Worst show, starring Hollywood screenwriter and director Max Landis. For those who don't know who Red Letter Media are, they're a bunch of hack frauds! <coughs> They watch and discuss films and TV shows on a variety of web series, one of those series being Best of the Worst. They are most famous on the internet for their Mr. Plinkett videos, which are a series of long, in-depth analyses of films such as the Star Wars prequels. These videos pioneered and popularized the concept of media reviews, and they inspired an entire generation of similarly snarky and cynical movie reviewers on the internet. For those who don't know who Max Landis is, he's a Hollywood director and screenwriter responsible for the films Chronicle, Me, Him, Her, and Bright. I myself have never watched any of these movies, but they're without a doubt the most well-known things Max Landis is associated with. If you've been following the recent news surrounding him, however, you should know that he's been accused of sexually assaulting and mentally abusing several women. As soon as this news broke, Red Letter Media delisted the best of the worst video that featured Max Landis. Doing that alone would anger me enough, but the unfortunate reality is that that specific best of the worst video is considered by many RLM fans to be among the funniest in the entire series. I personally don't agree, however, what I or any other fan thinks about the episode isn't important, and that same point goes for what people think of the Simpsons episode with Michael Jackson. At the end of the day, it's just as wrong of RLM to delist the video purely because of the allegations surrounding Max Landis as it's wrong of Fox to remove Stark Raving Dad from syndication regardless of either's critical reception. In RLM's case, not only did the Max Linus allegations come out years after the video in question was uploaded, but it, to me, honestly seems like a pointless move to make. Why even do anything like delist the video in the first place? What was the point? What the fuck does this ultimately accomplish? I will go further in depth with my thoughts on the situation, but for right now, Let's focus on Peanut Butter Gamer, The Game Grumps, and Pro Jared. If there are any of you who don't know about the Pro Jared situation, or who Peanut Butter Gamer and The Game Grumps are, then who boy, you're in for a wild ride. Okay, okay. Here's the basic rundown of what happened. Pro Jared, a YouTube video game reviewer who's part of the Normal Boots Collective, which is a small group of video game reviewers that also includes Peanut Butter Gamer, incidentally, 
cheated on his wife with Commander Holly, another YouTuber who was once married to Ross O'Donovan, aka Rubber Ross, an animator and let's player most popular thanks to being a part of the Game Grumps, who are themselves a mega popular let's player channel with millions of subscribers. Pro Jared also sent nudes to underage fans and solicited nudes from said fans as well. Needless to say, once this story broke, literally everybody who ever associated with Pro Jared cut ties with the man and he was relentlessly roasted by the internet. Of course, once the James Charles situation unfolded, and believe me, that entire mess deserves a video in its own right for how fucked up it is, not on James Charles' side, but more on his accuser's side, again, again, that's a video for another day, the hate mob forgot about Jared and moved on to a new target, which is kind of fucked since there have been a lot more details that have since come out regarding the pro-Jared situation, which muddies the waters of what is alleged to have happened between him, his wife, and Holly. If you want a comprehensive look at the entire situation and delves deeper into those details, then I suggest watching the Right Opinions video on the Pro Jared drama. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. For us, the only relevant things that we need to know is that Pro Jared cheated, or at the very least, manipulated his wife and sent nudes to underage fans. Now, I'm pretty sure that we can all agree that these are horrible, depraved actions, and that Pro Jared is a disgusting human being. So, what am I getting mad at the Game Gums and Peanut Butter Gamer for? No, I'm not upset at Peanut Butter Gamer, aka Austin, for responding to the initial allegations against Pro Jared with the childish statement, This ain't it, Chief. It was a pretty shitty thing to do, but to be completely fair to Austin, he put out his defending tweets way before all the leaks exposing Pro Jared's scum suckery surfaced, so at the time he was merely aiding a friend who he had no reason not to trust. Also, as soon as Pro Jared got exposed, Austin rightly apologized for defending him, stating that his offending tweet was a heat of the moment response to the drama that didn't take into account how serious the situation was and cut all ties with the man, so I have no beef with him for that. No, the reason I'm upset with Austin is that he has gone to its Let's Play channel, PBG Gameplay, and systematically privated entire seasons of his series Minecraft Hardcore. Why? All of these episodes, or at least the vast majority of them, starred Pro Jared among several other high profile YouTubers. The exact same thing happened with the Game Grumps, who have since deleted all of their Let's Plays featuring Pro Jared. Seriously, I cannot for the life of me find any Guest Grumps or Grumpkate episodes with Pro Jared, and I know they exist because I've not only watched one of them before, but a bumper for Pro Jared does exist, so I know they've made videos with him. You know what makes the situation even more fucked? The Game Grumps still have all the episodes Commander Holly was in up and running. Yep. Oh, Pro Jared got caught cheating on his wife and soliciting nudes from underage fans? Quick, delete all of our videos with him in it. Erase any evidence that we were at all involved with him at any point. But Commander Holly, our friend Ross's ex-wife, whom Pro Jared cheated with? All the videos with her are fine. There's no need to delete her content from my channel, no siree. All of this leads me to the subject of this video. Dear Red Letter Media, Peanut Butter Gamer, and the Game Grooms, Please stop deleting controversial videos! Yes, Max Landis and Pro Jared are absolute pieces of trash. Or, at least as far as Max is concerned, it's been alleged that he's a piece of trash. But that doesn't mean that you should just wipe away all the videos you guys have made with them. And I know what Red Letter Media fans are going to say. But Alex, you could still watch that Best of the Worst episode if you have the link for it, or just watch it on their official website. Just because they delisted it doesn't mean that it's gone forever, there are still ways to access it. See. Here's the thing though, that doesn't make them better. If anything, I would argue that that makes them worse. It's one thing to outright delete a video you made with a controversial person. At least when you do that, you're saying, I do not want to keep this video up because I made it with somebody who turned out to be a huge douchebag, and I don't want to make it seem like I support them and their actions by keeping the video up. That's still a bullshit stance to take, 
but at least you are taking a stance. When you delist a video, however, you're pussyfooting around the issue. You're saying to us, the audience, uh, I don't know, Max Landis did some awful shit, but instead of deleting the video forever, or just leaving it up and not giving a shit that Max Landis is in it, because we shouldn't be ashamed of ever having worked with him, when, at the time our videos were made, we weren't aware of all the allegations against him, we're just gonna delist it and never mention the video or Max Landis ever again. This criticism goes to you too, Austin, for privating all those Minecraft hardcore videos. At least have the guts to delete them and their playlists, dude. Hell, that best of the worst episode wasn't even the only thing that they delisted. They also had an interview with Max Landis that was uploaded on their channel that they also delisted. Why? Why does everybody think that delisting or deleting videos that have controversial figures in them is the right move to make? I understand that when you've attracted millions of subscribers on YouTube, as everybody I'm criticizing in this video have, that your YouTube channel effectively becomes a valuable multimedia brand. And like any valuable multimedia brand, you've got to be on the up and up, morally speaking. You don't want your brand tainted by public controversy, whether you're directly involved in it or not. And so, believe me, I do understand how tempting it is to get rid of any videos you made if they start people who have now been outed as creepy sex perverts. However, doing that doesn't really help or hurt anyone or advance some greater cause. I honestly think it's a cowardly thing to do, and it's clearly being done to win some social brownie points. Look at us guys, we happened to work with a famous person who got outed as a sex pervert and we deleted all our videos featuring them. Isn't that so great? Can we just forget that those videos ever happened and pretend that we never worked with any controversial figures? Hooray for revisionism! And just to be clear, I'm not defending Max Landis or Pro Jared. I think the things these two have been alleged to have done are fucking disgusting and awful. And I wouldn't ever want to associate with either of them. And I don't blame any of their friends or colleagues for breaking off all ties with them. However, that being said, I will always be against censorship of any kind. Deleting slash delisting videos or pulling episodes of a TV show from circulation just because they star a controversial celebrity is wrong, plain and simple. We can't just ignore history and pretend like none of these things ever happened. Here's an unfortunate truth about reality. A lot of really talented people who made awesome shit are horrible human beings. John Crick Falusi, John Lasseter, Chris Savino, Bill Cosby, the list goes on and on and on. Let me ask you this. Would it be alright to just erase all of the good shit these people have ever made and never mention it? If you say yes, then you have no respect for art. We shouldn't stop showing Pixar movies because John Lasseter molested women. We shouldn't stop showing any of the movies Harvey Weinstein helped produce, some of which are considered by many people to be masterpieces by the way, because he was a sexual predator. We shouldn't stop releasing Michael Jackson's music because he molested children. We should not be deleting YouTube videos guest starring Pro Jared and Max Landis because they turned out to be sex perverts. You do not help anybody by censoring art, no matter how good or bad the art itself is. You can go ahead and call me pretentious for implying that YouTube videos are art, but just look at channels like Red Letter Media and Game Grumps and try to imagine the workload that these people have. How many man hours and dollars have to be spent to build the sets that RLM uses for their shows and to watch the shitty movies that they commentate on? How much do you think the rent costs on that apartment the Game Grumps film all their stuff in? What about all those cameras and microphones they use, or the computers that they edit their shit on? That can't be cheap. To throw away any of these videos just because they happen to star controversial figures is a slap in the face not just to us, the fans who will never be able to watch them again whenever we want to, but also to all the people behind the scenes who will pretty much get all of their hard work wasted and thrown into the empty void of nothingness just because of one bad apple. Let's go back to The Simpsons and the suddenly controversial Stark Raving Dad episode for a moment. Think about all the people who had to work on that episode to get it produced. 
the storyboard artists, the animators, the voice actors, the inkers, the writers, etc, etc, etc. All of these guys are basically getting screwed over just because some executive said to themselves, Ah shit, this documentary said Michael Jackson's a pedophile. We gotta pull this decades old episode off the air right now. Yeah, if you have DVD releases of The Simpsons, then you're still gonna be able to watch the episode. But what if you're somebody who doesn't buy the DVD releases and can only watch The Simpsons either on air or on streaming services? Hell, who's to say that in the future Fox won't just take the Strike Raving Dad episode out of the DVDs? Like, in that situation, you're just fucked. Unless you just pirate the episode, I guess. When asked about his decision to pull Strike Raving Dad from the air, Simpsons executive James Brooks said the following, This is a treasured episode. There are a lot of great memories that we have wrapped up in that one, and this certainly doesn't allow them to remain. I'm against book burning of any kind, but this is our book, and we're allowed to take out a chapter. Nigga, if you take a chapter out of your book, then you are still burning it. Ugh. How do you live with yourself? Let's also not forget that the allegations against Michael Jackson have existed for decades. To quote Wikipedia, In August 1993, Jackson was accused of child sexual abuse by a 13-year-old boy, Jordan Chandler, and his father, Evan Chandler. In January 1994, Jackson settled with the Chandlers out of court for $25 million. The police never pressed criminal charges. Citing a lack of evidence without Jordan's testimony, the state closed its investigation on September 22, 1994. Okay, 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 so we have all known about these allegations for over 20 years. So why is it that it's only now that Stark Raving Dad gets pulled from the air? Why didn't it get pulled from the air as soon as these allegations came to light, which was two years after the episode came out? What the fuck? Are you kidding me with this? If you're somebody who cannot separate the art from the artist, then by all means don't support either. That's absolutely in your right to do. However, just because there are people who can't separate the art from the artists, doesn't mean we should start censoring or erasing art just because it's made by or features controversial figures. That is not the right way to address this issue. It's wrong, it disrespects all of the other people involved in the process of making art who aren't pieces of shit. So please, Red Letter Media, Game Grumps, Peanut Butter Gamer, Fox, and anybody else who has ever done this, stop doing it. There's one argument I often see people bring up in favor of this sort of censorship. That argument being, it's their content, they own it, and they get to decide what to do with it. Let me go ahead and tell you why that's a stupid fucking argument. Suppose that news comes out that Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons, was a serial rapist, Bill Cosby style. And in response to this, Fox chooses to take The Simpsons off the air forever. I'm not talking one episode, I'm talking the whole fucking series. Anybody who hasn't bought DVDs of the show or digital copies of it will effectively never get to see The Simpsons again. What's so wrong about that? Screw the hundreds of episodes of The Simpsons that people watch and have enjoyed for decades. It's Fox's show and they can do whatever they want with it, right? What about the Game Grumps? Suppose Aaron or Dan get exposed and we find out they're like pedophiles or something and all the videos that they've ever made together get wiped off the internet for good. It's well within their right to do that because it's their content, right? Screw the hundreds upon hundreds of funny let's plays that Grumps fans quote to each other and rewatch for enjoyment. It's their content, they get to decide what to do with it, right? <sighs> At the end of the day, guys, always fight against this sort of censorship. It's never a good thing for anybody and it sets a terrible precedent that could leave us with some pretty horrifying implications. I'm Alex the Critic and I will see you guys next time. Oh shit, oh shit. Um, okay, uh, I forgot that I have some important news to tell all of you guys. Alright, so what's going on is that I-